Okay, good morning, everyone. Good to, good to see you this morning. Hope you had a good week, and of course, I pray, and I truly mean it. Hope you have a pray for your week ahead, and things are going well. If you would, uh, let's all stand, turn to page 443, please. We've had a lot of sunshine this week, so we're going to sing about sunshine in the soul. A different sunshine, that is. 443, we'll sing first, second, and last verse, okay? <clears throat> There is sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright than glows in any earthly skies. <coughs> is my light, oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine. Happy moments roll when Jesus shows a smiling face. There is sunshine in my soul. There is music in my soul today. A carol to the King and Jesus listening can hear. The I cannot sing. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine. The peaceful, happy moments roll when Jesus shows a smiling face. There is sunshine in my there is gladness in my soul today, and hope and praise and love for the blessings which he gives me now, for joys laid up above. <coughs> Happy moments roll when Jesus shows a smiling face. There is sunshine in my soul. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, again this morning we would ask that you would meet with us throughout today and your will will be done in every heart and every life. I just pray, dear Lord, that we would recognize that we're here to, to worship you and to serve you. And Lord, we just pray that your will will be done. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. <coughs> uh, please remember, if you will, um, by the way, we're glad that you're here this morning. And the ones that are home, we're glad that you tuned in with us also. And so... Uh, uh, please remember, I do see uh, Sandy Hopper here uh, come in late, and uh, so uh, feeling better? Mike? Okay, all right, good. So continue praying for them, if you will. Uh, Debbie Ratliff, uh, pray for them, and if you will, I think she's going to be having foot surgery. Uh, had it, already had it, so uh, that, you know, that's probably painful and things like that, can't walk on it, and so pray for her, pray for the La Rattler family, if you will, all of them, and, and then uh, continue praying for the ones that we have been, uh, Leonard and, and Juanita and Gene uh, uh, Rogers, and, and uh, also Vicki Thornburg, pray for her, uh, Don, uh, Don, uh, Grant, pray for her, and Philip and Jessica uh, Pitcher, pray for them. And then we've been praying off and on for uh, Kim Patterson. Uh, continue to pray for her, if you will, my niece, and, and she is going through battling cancer and the painful and all like that. So just continue to pray for her, if you will. And then Ryan Clark has a uh, extreme pain in his back, herniated disc, and so he's waiting for 
uh, doctors to do something there. And so uh, continue praying for him, if you will. And, and then, as always, pray for the church and, and uh, pastor and leaders and one another. And then uh, pray for the visitors that we've been having uh, coming in, that they would uh, uh, do what the, the Lord would have them to do. You know, everybody, uh, uh, I'd, I'd like for everybody to come, but, you know, uh, there's the Lord's will in everybody's life, and they must do what the Lord's will is. So just pray, if you will, concerning the visitors that are coming, and then also pray for our country and the president, uh, leaders of our country, and and we have many problems in our country, as you know, and, and it seems like COVID is coming back in a a greater way with this other uh, COVID coming on. And so uh, we're in trying times. And, and so uh, just continue to pray, if you will. Uh, pray for the policeman. I understand a police, a police officer got shot and killed, another one wounded uh, you know, last night. And so continue praying for them, if you will. And then pray for our missionaries, if you will. And, and we have two. Uh, we have Weber, the uh, Webers from Australia had a letter read from them on Wednesday night and the Hickeys have one in the bulletin today from Brazil. So pray for them and read the letter and, and pray for them as well. And then the others uh, uh, pray for them also uh, as God lays it up on your heart. Do we have any uh, new prayer requests in this section? Okay, how about in this section? Yes. This is the season for it. I'll tell you, I've been battling some, and, and so far I've been able to overcome it, uh, but I know what he's going through. Anybody else? Wally Garrett, pray for him, sinus problems. Anybody else? Uh, in far section. Okay, unspoken. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we... Once again, want to thank you uh, for the privilege of coming to you and asking you to do that which we cannot. And Lord, we're dependent upon you for answered prayer. We're dependent upon you for uh, health and strength. And, and Lord, uh, we just pray that you would lead and guide and direct in everything that's said this morning and today. And, and we pray your blessing upon it ask you to lead and guide and direct us. Give us health and strength that we might serve you, for it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, Brother Dave. Okay, if you would, take your hand and we'll turn to page 113. Sweet hour of prayer. We're seeing the first and last verse. Page 113. <clears throat> Oh. 
Thank you, Brother Dave. Cindy, appreciate it very much. Um, turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter 13. We've been looking at the parables, and I trust that you have uh, got some things down. You know, uh, sometimes uh, uh, while we're reading, uh, we forget to uh, include, in, especially in the book of Matthew, now, we went through uh, the different uh, Gospels, the four Gospels, why that they were there. Uh, and, of course, all of them represented different things. In the book of Matthew, it's representing the king and everything uh, about the kingdom. And, and, of course, you know the kingdom was presented, the kingdom on earth. Let me distinguish that. The kingdom on earth was presented. Uh, the Lord said the kingdom of, of, of God is at hand. It was there. The king was there. The kingdom was set up. John the Baptist said the kingdom is at hand. And so the king, kingdom and the king was there to set up the kingdom. And then, of course, the rejection came about. And so there we see uh, that the uh, kingdom of, of, of God or this earth is postponed, and uh, eventually, uh, after the tribulation period, uh, the kingdom of this earth will be set up. Uh, we see that he will rule and reign uh, forever and ever in the, from the book of Revelation. And so here we see the, the kingdom of heaven now, and so that is a kingdom that's from God. God's kingdom, God has always had a kingdom and it, it, because uh, he is the creator, uh, he is the sustainer of life and all like that. So it is, his, it, it is his world that we see the kingdom of heaven and he sits in on the right hand of God uh, making intercession for us and ruling in heaven and of course the kingdom of God is taking place. And so... Uh, just wanted you to understand that, and you know, uh, if you're not used to it, then it's a little complicated to get in your mind. Uh, but then we see here the second uh, parable. Uh, turn in your Bible or whatever you have, uh, Matthew 13, and we'll begin in verse 24. And it says, another parable he put forth unto them. Now you'll remember who them are. They are the multitude. And this is what he said to the multitude, uh, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed his good seed in his field. Now, uh, something that I want to bring out to you in that verse is where it says, which sowed good seed in his field. And that's an important word. Many times we'll read the scriptures and we'll pass over little things like that and therefore we really do not get the jester of it. Uh, but the field here is his. Who is he? It's God. It's God's kingdom. And so it is his field that they're talking about. And then it says, uh, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto man which sowed the good seed in his field. Uh, when, but when while men slept, his enemies came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when, when the uh, blades were sprung up and brought forth fruit, then up, appeared the tares also. So the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sirs, did thou uh, not... that?" Uh, Didst not thou sow the good seed in thy field? From whence then come the tares? And he said unto, unto them, An enemy has come, has done this. And the servants uh, said, un, and the servants said unto him, Will thou then uh, uh, that we go and and uh, gather them up? And that, but it says, But he saith, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares. You root also up the wheat with them. And it says in verse 30, 
let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reaper, Gather ye together the first tear, uh, first tares, and bind them in, in bundles to be burned them, but gather the wheat unto my barn. And so here we find uh, that he is speaking to the, uh, the multitude. And of course, he, uh, uh, they really could not understand what was being said. And also, we see that if the disciples were listening in, they would not have been able to understand as well. And so here we find uh, that the, and let me just go back and say this. The first parable uh, about the sower is what the work of, uh, of the Lord, the work of Christ. Now here we're going to see the work of the devil, how the devil works even today. In, in this kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, how that is, and how that first of all, how Christ, when he is up on this earth, he started sowing the seed, the gospel story, telling people about the gospel. And of course, we mentioned this, that we are to continue doing so, planting, uh, sowing the seed, sowing the word of God around the world. Uh, and so here we see the work of Satan. And the, of course, the parable of the, Tear, or uh, I, I call it the, tear, uh, the parable of the wheat and tear, is about two sowers, the two sowers here. And look, if you will, in verse 36, uh, where that we see that he, uh, maybe I ought to go and read that to you, uh, and, and let us read it, then we'll make comment upon it. Uh, here we see that he is speaking now to the disciples. He is speaking now to the disciples. Verse 36, Then Jesus said, Sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. And he answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good uh, seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest in, in, is the end of the world, and the reapers are the, uh, the angels. As uh, Therefore, the tares are gathered uh, and burned in fire, and so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and, and they shall uh, gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. And then shall uh, wh them which do iniquity, uh, and, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, and there shall be wailing and, and gashing of teeth. Then sh uh, shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who has ears to hear, let him hear. And of course, it always ended up. He, you that hear, uh, you make sure you hear well, right. And so uh, we find here, uh, first of all, he spoke to the multitude. And of course, they were not to understand it. And so, but then the disciples said, well, can you tell us? Uh, can you give us a better definition? And so we see that he does. And, of course, uh, if you have uh, uh, read along with us, you see that it's the work of the devil that is taking place here. But the two sowers, and then there is two seeds here that are mentioned uh, in, in the Bible. And so we see the uh, first uh, one that sows, uh, the, the first one is the, uh, the good seed. It is none other then the Lord Jesus Christ. It says there in verse 37, uh, He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. And so here the good seed is being sowed. And of course we're going to find out what the seed is in just a moment. Uh, but then if you will uh, look at the other sower, uh, you will see that in verse 37, The enemy that sowed them is the devil. And so the ones that sowed the good seed is none other 
uh, than uh, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, meaning uh, that saved people are in this world, are in the field, and God has placed them around the world and where that they can be an influence uh, for the Lord. And then we see also uh, there in the, uh, secondly, we find that it's talking about the devil as he comes in and he sows the tear. And then we see the two, the, the two seeds. Uh, we find, first of all, in verse 38, it says, The field is the world, the good seed are the children of the, of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked. So we're talking about people now instead of just sowing the word. It's the people that God has placed, uh, the good people, uh, the good seed is uh, placed by God Almighty. The, uh, the other, the bad seed that we could say, uh, is of the devil. The tare is of the devil. And he plants. Uh, the devil uh, plants people around the world. Around the world. And, and so we see the two seeds are people. They're, they're not just laying there and, and, and things like that, but they're actually people uh, that are there. The children of the wicked one, we are told, and there has, you know, when you begin to think about this, there's always has been a battle. There always has been a battle uh, of the two seeds. The, of the two seeds have always had a battle. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the war between the two seeds was predicted. It was predicted by God Almighty. Uh, you will find that in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 where the, the Lord uh, God said something like this uh, to the devil, I will put uh, my seed and, uh, and empty against your seed. And so we see the two seeds have always had a battle. Ever since man sinned, uh, come into this world, uh, the devil and, 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 uh, and God has always had a battle over the two seeds. And so we see that was predicted there. And then look at verse 38. We see where the seeds were planted. Verse 38, the, sea, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked. So the field is the world. And, and, and so we see that at this particular time, uh, the church is not included in this, is not included. Uh, you know, if you try to put the church uh, and, and uh, uh, that in this uh, parable, uh, you will make a terrible mistake uh, because uh, you will be saying the two seeds are together in the church. And, and, uh, and that's not so. The church is made up of believers. Now, I will say this. Uh, the, uh, the church is included in this period uh, of, uh, in this age uh, of, uh, uh, of what is going on today. Uh, but then we will see where the church becomes dominant after, after a period of time uh, in the book of Matthew where it says uh, go into all the world and preach the gospel and things like that to the local church. But we see here uh, that the seed was planted in the field and that's the world of the worldwide, and of course we see also in this uh, the devil, as we look at the parable, uh, we see the devil use different uh, method. He uses a different method. Uh, we see uh, he doesn't try to pluck uh, the seed out of the hearts of individuals as he did in the uh, first parable, but now we see he uses the method of planting his his seed in this world. The, the tear, the unsaved people, are placed in this world by none other than the devil. And so we see the devil does the same thing as Christ did. Christ planted the good seed. Christ plants the good, the good, good seed who is the children of God. So what does Satan do? He comes along, and he just simply 
uh, mimics what the Lord has done. And so we see the Lord is sowing the good seed, and they're the children of God. The devil is sowing the, uh, the uh, tear, and so that's the child of the, his children. The good seed and the tear uh, are so much alike. Uh, now, I don't know anything about wheat, the, uh, you know, just what I've read. But the tear that comes up looks like wheat. And so we see you cannot tell the difference between the tear and the seed. And, and that is so important. We, we see that the devil, uh, you know, uh, he, he has different ways of making the good seed uh, or the bad seed look like the good seed. There, uh, you know, and, of course, uh, the good, the tear will look like only in appearance, not in action, but in appearance. As you look at the unsaved and the saved, they appear to be uh, the same, uh, but then in, in appearance only. But then their actions are different, and so appearance only. And so you can't tell them apart. And so what does God say? I want you to let them alone, and, and I want you to leave them there in this world. You don't try to, to eliminate the, uh, the unsaved or the tear from the wheat because you're going to tear up some of the wheat if you do so. And so here we find uh, that as, as we go through this old world, they're growing together. Uh, and, of course, as we read uh, in the Word of God, uh, we see that they grow together. And, and you know, uh, uh, the scribes and the Pharisees are good examples uh, of this very thing that we're talking about. The, uh, the scribes and the Pharisees were the terror of that day. But they appeared to be uh, like the saved people or the, the children of God. They appeared that way but then you could see their action, and that revealed who they were. And so the same principle works today. And, of course, that is a good example uh, you find in the Word of God about the scribes and the Pharisees. And so uh, the Lord said to them in John uh, 8, 44, he just simply says, you are of, uh, you are your, of your, uh, your father, the devil. He told that to the scribes and Pharisees. He said, you are none other than your father, the devil. That's who you are. And, of course, uh, we know that the devil works best in religion. He really does a good job as far as religion is concerned. You'll see throughout the word of God how that, in, in the, especially in the New Testament, how that we find uh, his work as, uh, in, in religion, all religion, uh, you, you'll see him working in that area. Why? Because most people will accept it. Most people will think, as, well, that's no harm. Uh, you know, like the Muslim. There's people that say, oh, let them, uh, uh, what they say and what they do, uh, that's good, that, that's okay. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. And, and, of course, not only that, but they will not allow the good seed to grow. They want to kill the Christian. They, they call them infidels, and they want to get rid of them. But the child of God does not do that. He allows the tear or the unsaved to grow in this world, knowing that God is going to take care of them, knowing that God is going to deal with them at the end time. So here we find... Uh, that uh, the uh, devil works best in, Christ, in the church house and the church and, and in religion. Uh, he has counterfeit uh, uh, Christians as well. Outwardly, they appear as Christians, but inwardly, they are not. Uh, he has churches. Uh, you, you know, you, you look at uh, various churches and what they do and what they say. If they're not preaching uh, they're not preaching the gospel uh, and, and doing the things that the Bible tells them to. They're a false church. Uh, they are a church of the devil. And, and we need to know that. 
how that they, uh, uh, they have, are counterfeit Christians, and then they have churches, and then certainly they have a minister, of ministers, even the devil. Uh, he can change himself into a, a light, a minister of light. He has that ability. And so it's very decept deceptive that he does. His, uh, he has uh, ministers preaching. And, of course, it's another gospel. And, and not only that, but it's an, a, another Jesus, as we find in uh, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 11, or 2 Corinthians chapter 11. In verse 4, it starts there and it continues on into, uh, into uh, chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, where you see once again uh, what, the, the, uh, what the devil is doing, preaching another gospel. It, it's just not according to the word of God. And certainly uh, we see that our Lord, our Lord said in the last days Satan would be used deception. And that's what he is good at. He is able to deceive people. He is able to deceive individuals into believing that it's all right uh, to do this and all right to believe in the way that, uh, that they present uh, to uh, the congregation or whatever it might be. Uh, that, and, of course, you can find that in Matthew chapter 24 uh, where that we read that uh, in the last days, how Satan will use deceptions and things like that, align wonders, signs and wonders and things like that. And so we're certainly living in the last days. And of course, uh, as the, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 2, we ought not to be ignorant of his devices. And the way that we get to know what the devil is doing is by reading the word of God. The only way in the world uh, that we are going to see how deceptive the, the devil is, is by reading the word of God. Reading the word of God. And we ought not to be ignorant of his devices. He's in the world today, and he is doing uh, what he, he wants to do. And, and, of course, you say, well, uh, why isn't God... Uh, 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 why isn't God doing anything? Uh, we, we'll see a little bit later what God is doing, but we know that God is allowing, as we've already read, he is allowing the good seed and the bad seed to live together. And that will be always until the end time. And when the end time comes, then there's going to be a big separation that takes place. And, of course, we know not only that, but we see the, uh, the terror or the unsaved will appear, as uh, Jesus said in uh, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 5, where he says, uh, They will come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ra ravening wolves. In other words, they appear one way, and they are action is another way. They are deceiving people, even today in which we live. And so we find sheep clothing, but inwardly, uh, rabbing wolves and, and different things like that. Uh, did you know uh, that Judas was a tear? He was unsaved. And here he was. How long did he, how long was he with the Lord? Three years? I, you know, some say three years. And nobody ever suspected him as being the one that would deceive people. And then we see that he would uh, uh, tell, tell on the Lord and, and, and things of that nature. But say uh, Judas, uh, I'm sure, and that's why you're, you'll remember in Scripture where uh, Jesus had them together and said, one of you is going to betray me. And they began to say, one by one, is it I? Is it going to be me? Who is it? And of course, uh, the Lord revealed who it was, the one that was up with him. And of course, it turned out to be Judas. And when that took place, uh, then Judas left, left the, the place, and uh, never to return. And so we see that Judas was a tear. 
And of course, uh, turn in, in your Bible, if you will. I think this is important uh, for us to see. In Second uh, Peter chapter uh, 2 and verse 1, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift, a swift deception. And, of course, if you go on down, you'll find in the book, a little book of Jude, in verse 3, uh, where it says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our Lord uh, into licentiousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And so here we find in, in a warning uh, us about the activity of Satan, how that he is, uh, uh, how that the activity, the methods that the devil uses, the devices that he uses, I'm telling you, he is, is a master at deception. He is a master, and of course, the reason why he continues to do it, because he is so successful at doing that very thing. And of course, uh, we see uh, the Bible telling us uh, in, the, in the book of um, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 13, uh, we'll, we'll see that in verse 38, uh, the Bible tells us where that we're going to find them, and we've already read that one time. But if you will look in verse 38 where it says, And the field is the world, and the good seed are the children of, 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 king, of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked. And so we see here uh, that they're in the world. They're in the world, and that needs to be recognized. We know that we face them every day of our life. Uh, and, of course, again, emphasizing this is not about the local assembly. This is not about it, although it is included in, in the kingdom of, of, the earth, of heaven. It is included, and it will take place later on. Uh, but we see eventually... Uh, the believer uh, it, it will be separated from the unbeliever. Look at verse 43, if you will. Then shall the righteous shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of their father, who has ear to hear, let him hear. And so we find here in that, in that verse of scripture, uh, shall the righteous shine forth as a sun and the father who has Ear to hear, let them hear. And so we find here that there's going to be a separation. And, of course, we know when that's going to take place. Uh, it is going to be at the end time. Look, if you will, Roman, uh, Revelation, if you will, 11, uh, uh, chapter 11, and verse 15, where we see that separation taking place. And, and the seven angels sounded, and when there was a great voice in heaven, saying, The kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Uh, we see uh, the, uh, in concluding this parable, I, I want you to notice something. Uh, notice the enemy was sowing tares, uh, certainly in, in that, but we see the challenge to us is this today. Uh, we are not to fall asleep. As verse 25 says, uh, when the devil come in, people were sleeping and slumbering. And so we find here today that the Bible telling us we ought not to sleep. We ought not to sleep, but be on guard. Be on guard. Be on guard. All the time, we, we have, do not want us to be, be sleeping in the day in which we live in because the devil is so, uh, so deceptive. And if we sleep, uh, he'll be doing things that he ought not to be doing. And he'll influence us like never before. And so it's important for us to recognize 
that the two seeds are in this world. And we need to live. By the way, let me just say this. It doesn't matter. We could have all of our government, the president, the vice president, the Senate, the Congress, all of them to be Christian, but we are not going to change this world. We're not going to change the world. You might as well just get that out of your mind. You know, years ago, there used to be a movement on that one day we're going to have a utopia, and everything is going to be perfect. But we see just the opposite has taken place. And so we see that it, uh, God raises up people that he wants in office, and he puts them down and different things like that. But that doesn't mean you don't need to vote. And, and uh, do what your responsibility is uh, towards God. Let him do that. But even God is not changing the world. Did you know that? God is not changing this world. What is he doing? He is calling out a people for his name. That's what he's doing. Little by little, one by one, he is calling out the, uns the tear and where that they can be saved. That's what God is doing today. But one day, one day, uh, you read in the Revelation where uh, that he is going to rule and reign. He is going to rule and reign over this world. And then he is going to change. And of course he said, uh, this kingdom, uh, this kingdom is is not mine. The kingdom of the world is not mine. That's what he said. It's not mine. But he said, one day I'm going to be ruling and reigning in my kingdom upon this earth. And so we look to the future, and he's going to rule and reign with the believer. And if you're a believer this morning, then you have to look forward to a time when you are going to be caught up into his kingdom and rule and reign forever and ever. Just think about it. But until then, we're living among the tares. We're living among the unsaved. And we should do our very best to keep our, 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 our minds open, uh, keep our uh, look towards the skies, uh, reading the Word of God, become familiar with the Word of God where that we can be ready when anything comes along and we'll be able to see deception or anything like that uh, taking place. And the more we know about the Word of God, then the uh, more protection we have against Satan. Did you know that? The more familiar you become, you'll be able to recognize the methods and the, uh, and the devices of the devil you'll be able to recognize them very clearly. And so we, that's what we need to do. The two seeds are the unsaved and the saved. The two, the, uh, the two sowers are Christ and the, or the Son of God and the devil. And so they're mingling together, sowing their own seed, but one day, as we've read, they're going to be bundled up and they're going to be placed in the fire, which is... The, uh, hell, and then, of course, the righteous will be with him forever and ever. Isn't that a wonderful thought? It sure is. Let's bow our heads and we'll be dismissed in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the word of God. And Lord, I, I pray you might give us understanding of, of the word. And Lord, that we, as we go through this life, knowing that we're going to be faced with terror, and people that are unsaved. And, and Lord, help us to do our very best uh, to witness to them and tell them uh, about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us not to do harm to the unsaved, but tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, I just pray that your will will be done, for we do ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you're dismissed.